Hello. <laughs> so I'm actually recording from my grow room, which is sort of in flux right now. So I'm trying to clean up and expand my shelf space. And right behind you is several shelves set up, but I have a bunch of random stuff on there and some experiments that I will get into in a later video, perhaps. Um, today's video is actually specifically about, it's kind of time sensitive because I want to talk about Baker Creek, uh, rareseeds.com, my favorite place to order seeds from. I love the company. I love their selection, you know, all open pollinated, all heirloom, all non whatever, whatever. Um, I just dig the company a lot and they're doing a special promotion this week. So as I'm recording this and I'm going to post it the same day I record this. So right now until September 6, 2017, Baker Creek is donating 100% of their seed sales to hurricane relief. Because if you're okay, if you're not from the United States of America, we've been hit, including Puerto Rico, we've been hit by massive hurricanes, a lot of damage. And I really, really appreciate that Baker Creek is doing this. Now it also is just pretty good timing because I am in desperate need of ordering seeds for next year. The problem is I hadn't quite figured out what I wanted to do yet. So I'm, I actually took this morning because it's really crappy rainy out, so I can't do anything outside. So this is like the perfect time to online shop, I guess. But I've been, I've been running through and I want to share the varieties I'm trying. Now, my sort of focus is I, my goal, assuming I have a nice day to actually work and finish these, I'm going to have 32 raised beds, so circular raised beds. So that's a lot. But I'm actually going to, I have a habit of buying seeds for things I want to try and things that I think will be cool, whether or not I end up using them or whether or not I end up enjoying the product. So um, this, this coming season, next season, I want to really focus on doing those things that I know that I'm going to eat and specifically with the theme of things that I know I'm going to store long term. You know, because a couple of my goals in eating it in homesteading is to eventually produce the vast majority, if not all the food that I consume. Obviously some goods I'll still bring in because I doubt I'll be making my own salt. So things like that, probably not. But I mean, realistically, um, and part of that is given the fact that I'm not keen on killing animals, it's also gearing what I grow towards a vegetarian diet. So looking for sources of proteins in that, in that. Uh, so beans are a big part of what I'm gonna be growing. Corn too. So I just wanna run down the list and just talk a little bit about, right now I have a, my cart is I think $78 of seeds, which sounds like a lot, but I bought some fun little things too that um, will be useful or pragmatic, but they're a little fancy. <laughs> so I wanted, um, for starters, I, I, I'm getting uh, painted mountain corn. And this is a, a colorful variety of corn that is, I believe it's a dent corn. So I'll be using it for corn flour or basically I'll be waiting until it dries. And it comes in these gorgeous colors. It's one of those varieties. It's not like glass gem corn pretty, but it comes in you know bright blues and bright, bright reds. Um, another corn variety I wanna try for my sweet corn is the midnight snack corn. So this is a sweet corn variety that um, is good for cold climates because that's another thing. I'm really trying to focus on plants that are early and good for north and northern cold climates because that is where I am. So that'll be that's another theme you'll you'll see here. So um, the midnight snack sweet corn I'm excited about because in the milk stage it's a sweet corn, it's very delicious sweet corn, but then it'll actually dry to a black or dark blue corn if I end up using you know if anything goes if I let it go that far for you know as a flower corn etc. Um, I'm getting a bunch of different kinds of bees. One of them is the Agnes's Blue Bean, which is super duper pretty. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I don't know if I should share these photos or not, but I'll let you look them up. Um, and this is actually, I'm buying a lot of beans that will be dried beans. So I'm not gonna mention every single one of them, but there's also a Jade Bean that I'm getting. Um, of course, Black Turtle Beans, uh, Scarlet Runner Beans, things that I can dry. And I noticed that their black garbanzo beans is no longer on the site. So luckily I still have some seeds because so I'll probably be growing those as well. 
Um, I'm buying a different, lot of different types of squash, specifically bush varieties. Whenever I can, in terms of melons and bush and everything else, I'm buying a lot of bush stuff because I don't, I can't, especially now that I'm growing in these, these raised beds, I don't want things that are vine out too much. Now, there's some things I'm probably going to plant that are going to vine out. And I think that for things that will vine out, that I couldn't get a bush variety or things that are technically bush, but they're still growing pretty big, I may sort of trellis since the, my raised beds are basically just goat fencing. When they grow over the edge, I'll kind of trellis them along the outside of the bed. And or um, in some cases, I may put some more fencing inside the bed so they can grow up kind of like more traditional trellis. So those are two of my strategies. But we'll see how it works out and it may be dependent. Um, also, you know, peas are going to be a big part. Eat a lot of peas. They're good for you. My daughter loves them. So I've gotten uh, um, two, two bush, bushy varieties. One that's a garden pea, so for shelling. And another that is uh, the Oregon sugar pod, which is a snow pea. Because my daughter loves eating those. Now I'm also getting a bunch of bush beans in all different colors. Royalty purple, red swan, golden wax and Blue Lake, which is a green. So I'm gonna have a bunch of different types of green beans because <laughs> I do love those. A couple early small varieties of watermelon, including the early moonbeam watermelon, which is a yellow flesh watermelon, and then Sugar Baby, which is a small red flesh. Um, I'm kind of, I didn't order any seeds for brassicas because I don't have a lot of success. So I may still grow them if I have space, but I'll probably end up buying starts from a local nursery. One exception is the early, purple sprouting broccoli, which doesn't grow a big head. It grows smaller, just small shoots. And I think that will be okay. It's just I never have good success with, with brassicas. And I probably will try them in the future. But for right now, it probably makes sense for me to have starts. And they're lower priority because fresh greens are awesome. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> One of those things. I'm also going to be doing small sugar pie pumpkins and may try a larger variety of pumpkin for, um, it's very windy in here. I have my, to create um, a lot of uh, fresh air exchange in the, the grow room, I have my windows open. Um, for tomatoes, I'm keeping it simple. I'm going to do the, blue, uh, the blueberry cherry tomato that I grew this year. I liked it. It's going bonkers in the garden even at the end of the season it just keeps growing and growing and the plants are falling over and then wherever it falls over it just puts up new plants it's like the most insane thing ever it's almost out of control to be quite honest and then i'm going to try like a, a determinate roma variety uh just for sauce so i have a good sauce uh tomato um for peppers i'm going to keep it simple i've realized i don't like bells every time i try bell peppers they just don't they take too long to like too long to develop, too long to fruit, and too long to become ripe. So I'm going to stick with the Jimmy Nardello, which is, you know, a long skinny red pepper. Love that pepper. I'm going to do pepper, pepperoncinis. <laughs> um, whether I do Greek or Italian, I'm not sure. I like both. I have seeds already for both. And probably banana peppers. I'm not going to bother, because I grow, I'm growing peppers, like hot peppers inside, like super hot peppers. So I don't know if I'll really bother. I probably won't buy any seeds. Gonna get a couple kinds of large sunflowers. Um, whether or not I eat, I collect those seeds for myself. I leave them out there for the wild birds to attract wild birds, which is beneficial because when you attract wild birds, they also come and eat all the, the creepy things off your plants. It's one thing I discovered with my blueberries this year. I have a couple of blueberries down by my garden. I didn't get a single blueberry, but all the birds came in for the blueberries and they stuck around and ate pests. Like I didn't really have, I had one sort of like probably green horn worm. I never actually saw the worms, but some kind of critter chewed down my tomatoes early in the season, but they didn't last long. I'm gonna try, I love the cosmic purple carrot and red, uh, atomic red carrot, so I'm gonna try a couple varieties of carrot. I was gonna go nuts and do a bunch of different types of radishes, but really French breakfast is my favorite radish. It's very mild and it grows really easily, so I'll probably do that. I'm gonna try an early beet because I always try to grow beets, but they don't seem to, it seems to take so long for them to get large in my garden. And that's pretty much it. Now I didn't mention every single variety I'm going to get. And I'm probably, there's gonna be seeds or starts that I buy locally too. I have 32 beds. I didn't order 32 different things and some of these are gonna be put in the same bed. So, so that's pretty much it. Really, I didn't, <laughs> this, this ended up being a much longer video than I intended. 
because I was really just trying to get the word out about Baker Creek Seeds donations because I think it's awesome and I think it's an awesome company and if you're you know planning right now on what you're going to grow next year buy your seeds right now and you can actually make a difference I think that's super cool and I highly encourage you to do it um, I'm not employed by Baker Creek I do not get any money from them I would though I'd love if they'd support me and send me seeds but you know I this is purely just me getting the word out is like a, a, a free citizen of the world. Um, also, new hair color. It's, it's probably hard to tell because I have my grow lights right behind you. So I have bright pink on top and like purple on the bottom, a little ombre type thing going on. So new color because my hair is always changing like the seasons themselves. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for joining me on this journey and supporting awesome companies and individuals, whether that be YouTubers like me or companies like Baker Creek. It's all good. We're all in it together. Let's grow some food. Thank you so much.